I have just discovered something, and this is a very emotional moment for me. A Mercedes AMG six cylinder. Yes, it is still possible here in the Mercedes AMG CLE 53, the return of the six cylinder, also here to this mid size segment. So you know that the C63 and also the GLC63, they went four cylinder, this plug in hybrid performance concept. But here now for the CLE, the six cylinder is in place. And might this be the AMG vehicle to go for right now? Maybe. Let's find out together with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here with the front. The CLE is this new coupe between C class and E class, basically merging both vehicles together. And here in this AMG version, we can see the Panamericana grille. So it's wider in the lower part, a little bit shorter in the top part, more aggressive look, vertical fins, AMG logo, and also uh, an aggressive lower part. Here, this is equipped with the night package. That means we have high gloss black elements. Otherwise, they would be brighter. And also, for example, high gloss black mirror caps there. The lights here equipped with the digital light, blue on the inside. This is also for more high beam performance. And they have a wider track than the standard models. That means a really strong stance all the way in the front. And you can see these hood accentuations together with air outtakes on the top. So you do already get a very aggressive look here with a 53 model. Now we're using here our super cool location. Michelle is on the top there filming down. Well, it's a beautiful perspective, right? Sometimes automotive designers especially pay attention to how the car is looking from the top actually. And here this works very well. You can also see the wider track in the rear here, just a wider hip area, very strong. And this typical coupe like silhouette, this is where this vehicle is working very, very well. And the overall length is 4 meters 85 or 191 inches. Wheels come standard 19 inch. These are the optional 20 inch wheels in black matte, really impressive. And you can also get these contrasting red brake calipers, for example. And you get rear axle steering as standard, steers in the opposite direction than the front wheel up to 2.5 degrees. Interesting is also standard for the Northern American market, US and Canada, and that is not available for the standard CLE versions on the US market. The European market, for example, also gets rear axle steering than for the CLE 450, for example. Towards the rear, we can see light signature, really slim. Just in the middle part, this is not connected. To me, this is the only irritating thing of the design. I would expect the light to proceed here, or what do you think? Tell me in the comments. Then we have the AMG badge right here and the sportier lower spoiler end. Look at that. But here, <whistles> whoa, that has an echo here in, in, our, in our location. The Autogefühl fake exhaust police is here for you because the outer part here is just, you know, Go, well, the air is going through, but the rear exhaust is on the inside. Suspension-wise, by the way, it is equipped standard with an adaptive suspension, AMG ride control. That means when you're set to the sport mode, for example, the ride is also a little bit stiffer. Mm. Do you hear that? That is a matte paint. It's called Graphite Grey Magno. And yeah, it's always a lot of fun then to hug the vehicles a little bit. I also love matte paints because when it rains, they kind of clean themselves. The only disadvantage is when you have minor scratches on it or maybe like a parking bump, which should of course never happen, then you cannot polish them. You have to repaint it. So that's the downside of it. But I think I would still go for it. Would you? I would like to know from you, are people making too big of a fuss about this fossil nothing? Or do you also think that a vehicle at that size and at that sportiness and that price definitely needs a six cylinder? So for me, it's always like I find that you either put a real engine in the vehicle, a proper one, also right size, or then you go all electric, but nothing like this, you know, four cylinder, something plug in hybrid performance in between. I don't think that makes any sense. This one does make sense. Here, the three liter inline six cylinder. In this case then, with 450 horsepower, with an electric boost as well, this is like a mild hybrid technology, 4.2 seconds in the acceleration figure. If we compare this one here to the CLE 450, it is the same base engine, just that this one here is 0.2 seconds quicker and also is around 70 horsepower more, just in the figure wise. And it also has an additional electric compressor. 
also interesting. And the all-wheel drive setup is a little bit different. This is here a more variable all-wheel drive setup they have for the AMG version. Still, you will remain in rear-wheel bias. Do you see that here, the red seat belt through the glass? Because this is a seat belt reacher there and it goes back. And when I close the door and zoom again, the seat belt reacher comes towards me. Zoom more to that. Here, this is the key fob. Really good quality and then door closing sound is, I would say, standard. Most of the time when we have frameless doors, it doesn't sound too good. There are very rare exceptions where it still sounds good when you close the door then. Then inside of the doors, this is all, you know, wrapped tightly here with high gloss black and capacitive BS hashtag. So this doesn't give you a real haptic feedback. Not too much to my liking though. Then the optional Baumeister sound system inside of the doors here, all hard pack. So yeah, what we see at the inside of the door, maybe not my most favorite. But here then, the steering wheel is pretty cool. Also with the microfiber, they call it microcut. That's an internal brand name for that. Steering wheel also with capacitive controls. You see one button is that whole field then. This will be interesting here with the controls for the driving modes and so on. And we can have carbon fiber decor elements next to these illuminated and with clicking sounds, <laughs> the air vents. That's always a nice feature. Seats look pretty spectacular. You get base sport seats. These here are the optional performance seats. So they have a wider shoulder area here. They are slimmer, they are stiffer, all covered with the microcut material, this microfiber. And also the outside is then the Artico, the high grade of the red. So this seat is actually, as they say, completely animal free. So also AMG going into a more animal friendly direction. That's actually quite cool. And the normal sports seat gives you a little bit better, you know, softer cushioning as for comfort and so on. These ones definitely very stiff. I have to see it in the driving part, how it plays out long term. But I would say spontaneously, you would rather go for the base sport seat if you want most comfort. These ones would be more suitable for the racetrack and so on. Then headroom here with 189 or 6 for 2. Look at that. Still some headroom left. And there is this panoramic roof here. And you can still open that one. And I do appreciate that because we see so many fixed glass roofs nowadays. And this one is a very wide opening actually. And it also has this shade. It comes forward here now just a little bit so you can also put that shade completely in the front if it's really hot. In order to use this service you need online voice control. Please check your Mercedes me settings. <laughs> Look at that here, cool feature. You could put the lower part a little bit longer of that seat here and yes you can drop your dirty comments right now right here in the comments. <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks really spectacular, doesn't it? Works for the co-driver seat and also for the driver's seat. Interior cockpit overview, 11.9 inch digital instruments, 12.3 inch rather vertical oriented screen, a rather known Mercedes interior, some sporty features definitely like this microfiber steering wheel and here we can also see these controls here for the driving mode selector for example. They also switch then in the screen, that's pretty cool. And on the left side I can for example activate the exhaust note. Not allowed to hear that one today yet, but we'll keep you updated with that, of course. So for the user interface, especially with the controls here, it's actually quite good. Yes, the climate control is in the screen, but for that, it always stays here and it's relatively easy to use. Digital instruments feature the standard Mercedes look, but also sport mode. And now here for the AMG is also the super sport mode or even the track pace when you visit the racetrack. And also the head-up display is highly adjustable, a race view, super sport, standard, minimal. I don't know what the control. infotainment system is telling me now, but here this is the settings for the head-up display. So you can also choose between all these options here. Infotainment system has this latest app view. We also know from the all-new E-Class, for example, so you can easily control everything. And you also have AMG specific gauges here, for example, to have some live vehicle feed while controlling it. And you have this ooh, animation of the IWC clock, so you don't have an analog thing in here, but you can use this one here as a digital stopwatch, for example. Middle console, yeah, high gloss black in the middle part. 
not my favorite. Here on the inside, then you have cup holders. They are somewhat adaptive, but they don't hold higher bottles tight. In the front, what's pretty cool, there's an inductive charging pad, which is also cool. It sucks away the hot air. The only thing is this rubber pad. Sometimes when you put your smartphone on there and then you put it out, you might take this one out with it, actually. I like the split armrest here in the middle. That's pretty nice. And also have USB-C charging and the closing sound. Ah. Now it's time to tease me a little bit. Thomas in the rear seat, time codes coming up. So I pull this strap here, then the seat automatically goes forward and you can see, yes, you can also theoretically sit in the rear, but does that really work also for tall adults? Let's see, also the nice microfiber on the rear seat. Let's see, I can crouch in. So, it is kind of cozy in this, dark hole here. Uh, headroom wise, yeah, I have to, you know, bow my spine a little bit down. Um, yeah, maybe for a shorter trip or something. But when I try to, I probably should take off my shoes for that, just to be, you know, with good manners here. Um, sitting behind the driver's seat is kind of tricky. Let's see if it fits legroom wise. Hardly. Um, but yeah, I mean here as you can see that this this like the dry the seat is I would be driving. So I think it does work for shorter trips. Um yeah, with some compromises and also pretty stiff the whole bolt string. But good to have the microfiber here as well. Um maybe in a way that when the passenger seat is slid a little bit more forward, then you drive it with three tall L's or something. But um yeah, it's always the case that Maybe you want to drop someone off, like maybe at the train station or some something like this. Uh, yeah, like I'd always do with Michelle, for example. But then he's most of the time on the co-driver seat. Unless Leah is also with that, then Michelle could be sitting here. Yeah, okay, so just thinking. So at least you have the possibility. Trunk or boot, 420 liters. That's six liters more than with the Sofa C Coupe and five liters less than with the E Coupe so far. Here, a little bit more than a meter of 40 inches in length and also meter of 40 inches in width hold the seats from the rear and then you not only have like half half but also this ski hatch in between Let me push that through like this so there you can see you have then these three possibilities just this hardback part here we've seen it with a lot of new mercedes vehicles um yeah i think it would be nicer if it would be covered in uh, you know in some kind of fabric by the way we can also take out this one and you can actually take everything out like this and this is a pretty cool idea basically to have this shopping basket underneath um, it's also not new at mercedes but here um like this yeah why not because i'm not sure if that happened to you but for me you know sometimes uh, when we go shopping then it's maybe like you know spontaneous or something and then it's like ah oh, damn it we forgot the shopping bags again because you know especially we try to like save not any more new plastic bags and so on and you always want to take your existing shopping bags and then you forget them again yeah but in this case then you at least have this <laughs> so is this the amg to go for now this sweet spot well it is kind of like this entry level amg in this segment i think it's a good idea because you still get a real six cylinder and it differentiates itself against like the C63 or also like a GLC 63 and so on. And it's not as expensive as like an AMG GT, two or four door and so on. So I think they really nailed it with this one here also design wise. What do you think? Do you agree with me? The only disadvantage with the CLE is of course that you get, let's say like an E-class coupe length at the C-class coupe technology but then again for more an E-Class price. That's the whole concept of the CLE, not specifically with the AMG version, but in general of the CLE. But overall, I think especially design aesthetics wise, it works very, very well. You should tune in to our CLE review where we've driven the CLE 450 and also present to you the Coupe and the Convertible, which we can also expect with this one here. And of course, there might be a 63 coming up. We'll keep you updated also here on our channel. And you can also tune in to the competitor, would be the BMW 4 Series.